And November the 17th is Operation Christmas Child Donation Deadline. There'll be choir practice at 5 today. Please come and join. Uh, I'll give you a little more information on the, the Fall Festival, Saturday, October 26th. They're asking for donations of individually wrapped candy. Please get that to the church office by October 20th. Miss Zeta is asking for cupcakes, Rice Krispies, brownies, and cookies for refreshments for the kids. We won't be having any cakes this year. The Operation Christmas Child, we will be doing the shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child again this year. Miss Camille will be giving out more information soon on how she would like to do this this year. We are thinking about just taking up a love offering to help with the boxes or taking up donations of certain items and having the youth involved by packing all the shoe boxes. There's also a Sunday school trip coming up. The children's Sunday school classes will be going on a field trip to the County Line Farm in Waycross on Sunday, November the 3rd. They will leave right after church and will drive to Waycross to eat pizza at Pizza Inn before going to the farm. Parents and grandparents are encouraged to attend also. This has always been a great family field trip that is enjoyed by all. There's a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board for anyone who would like to go. Letters will be passed out in Sunday school with additional information about the trip. If you got any questions, see Cynthia Santiago. There's also a fall festival October the 24th at uh, Nahuna Primary. It's from 4 to 7 p.m. They got several things going on. I'll put it on the bulletin board back in the back. There was 105 in Sunday school this morning. Oh, not trying to take anything away from anybody, but there was a Sunday school class this morning that went and had Sunday school with a, an individual that couldn't make it out to church and just know that your church is doing things. Thank you. I am so happy to see your smiling faces this morning as you come in to worship the Lord. You know, the scripture exhorts us in our attitude and actions before the Lord. Psalm 511 says, Let all those rejoice who put their trust in you. Let them ever shout for joy because you defend them. Let those also who love your name be joyful in you. Let's stand together right now as we sing trust and obey for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word what a glory he sheds on our way let us do his good will he abides Trust and 
seated as you continue to worship. The psalmist also said that everything about God, our Redeemer, is worthy of praise. When he said, and those who know your name will put your trust in you, for you, Lord, have not forsaken those who seek you.
us stand again and remember that we are worshiping and adoring a one whose name is most precious, most beautiful. And get my orchestra playing here again.
Amen. So be it. Amen. Step across the aisles round about. Greet your brothers and sisters in Christ.
I'm hearing a lot of joyful noises and seeing a lot of smiling faces, so I'm glad that you're glad that your brothers and sisters are here. Shake that last hand or two, and let's continue to worship for a few moments as we pre prepare to receive the tithes and offerings, so the ushers will prepare to come. But in the meantime, we're going to ask the Lord to be glorified in our lives, in our songs, and here in our church. Lord, be glorified. fears relieved 
How precious did that grace appear The hour I first believed My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The Lord has promised good to me his word my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are My God, my Savior has ransomed me, and like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace, my chains are God, my Savior, has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns, unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow. The sun forbear to shine. But God who called me here below will be forever mine. Will be forever mine you are forever I just recorded it while she was in the shower. Got something y'all want to watch on video? Then we won't talk about it.
pick his clothes out for him and all, uh, keep him looking pretty dressed up, you know, but, uh, and they all brag on it, <laughs> but we love both of y'all, uh, thank the Lord that we got a, a pastor that preaches the word, and we love you, and we, but we also, uh, thank the Lord that you got to help me, that helps you in the job that God put you to do, bro. and, uh, I'm going to have to read this card, bro. Okay. So that includes both of you. Can you hear me? All right, I need to get it. Back. Says for a. See how pretty it is, man. Pretty like Sister John said. Pretty. <laughs> Says for a wonderful pastor and his wife. Said two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. Come right out of God's word, Ecclesiastes 4 9, King James Version. That uh, Brother Jamie and Sister Janna, your partnership in ministry is a beautiful example of how two are better than one when the Lord is at the center. You are both so very special to us. With thankful hearts and a prayer for God's blessings for you, God has not, now this is a handwriting somebody wrote now. God has not only uh, bless this community with a great pastor but with a wonderful help me to keep him looking good which we just mentioned lays the clues out for him and tells him when to comb his hair we appreciate you both we all at Hickok Baptist Church love you and uh did you see out front on this table brother Miss Lois brought that to my attention but she only did because she wants one of them but uh I talked her out of it well, you know how Brother Jamie is always preaching about the biscuits he likes, and Sister Janice kind of limits him because she's watching his weights, you know. Well, he got some biscuits and deer meat on that side, and he got a pump, uh, pecan pie on that side. <laughs> Love both of y'all. Thank you. You want me to Yeah. You want to say something, honey? Yeah. Okay. 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 I'm going to drag these up for you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Thank you all so much. We love y'all too. <laughs> she talks more than that at the house, I'll assure you. Uh, thank y'all very much. You know, you don't <clears throat> you don't really know sometimes what goes on in a pastor's heart or his mind. Uh, you know, uh, never never been one. Yeah, it's my first one. But I love people. I like happiness. But most of all, I love my Savior. I'd have other things I'd be doing today if it weren't for Him. But it's because of Him and my family that I am what I am by the grace of God. Amen. That's the way they do it on the three stooges. <laughs> I'm just one stooge. Amen. If you have your Bibles, uh, look with me in Revelation chapter 21. Y'all should have done this after the message. Revelation chapter 21, as you, you turn there, I, I, I've been thinking. Preaching of the gospel of of Jesus Christ and 
whether it be the Old Testament or the New Testament, we, we basically preach history. We, we preach what's been pinned down by God's people years before us. And, and we gleam on them things. We, we look at them and, and we learn from them. Sometimes we do some of the same things, some of the good, some of the bad. But we look at those things of the past and they're wonderful. There's some stories and this is some of my favorite parts of the Bible to this morning. But we, you, you think about all those wonderful things and, and then the pictures today, you know, uh, the things of the past. And my wife asked me, what was I doing in one of those pictures? And I ain't going to tell you which one it was, but it looked like this. But I don't know what I was doing. I don't even know where I was at. Some smarty took my picture, though. I don't know who that was, but we look at those, and we enjoy, and we, 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 we always think of what was. You know, and then sometimes we, we preach at the very present moment. We preach about the things that are going on in our lives as we speak. And everywhere we look in the Bible, there's always answers for those situations. There's always guidelines. We can look back at the past. We can bring that to the forefront. It seems like God's got a message and he's got a word for everything that's going on as we walk day by day. And he promises that he'll be with us always, as his scripture says, even into the end of the world. You know, at end sounds kind of bad, but if you're a Christian, it's a glorious moment. But today I want to preach on the future. Today I want to let, it, let, a, little, let a little insight in through, through the Spirit of God and His words. There's better days to come. Amen. You say, well, how can it be? I mean, you know, I got my wife who loves me. I, I got my grandkids, my children. You know, I, I got a church that loves me. I got everything. But let me tell you, even in your life, there's a better day to come. You know, I've heard people say, it don't get us better than this. And I've said that about biscuits, but um, in the spiritual realm, there is something better. There's something better yet to come. Verse 1 of chapter 21 of Revelations, if you would stand with me as we read and honor the reading of God's Word. There's a word that's going to be used several times here. And I want you to pay close attention to it. And it says this, John was on the Isle of Patmos. There to be dead in Christ and, and the Spirit of God came to him and the angels came into him and gave him this whole book. But I want to read with you in verse 1 this morning. As he was on this spiritual trip, John said, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Father, today, God, we want to thank you for that preparation that you've done. Over 2,000 years, you began the, the preparation for your people. When you left your disciples, you says, I go to prepare a place for you. And there with where I am, you may be also. And God, that place is heaven. God, it's something that I have not seen. God, nor ears heard. And it hadn't even entered into our heart, Father, what you got laid up in store for us. But God, I know it's great. Because you're a great God. God, help us this morning as we look in your word. Lord, let it cheer us up. Let us encourage us of all the things that we do wrong. And all the things that we try to do and run upon problem after problem, God, we know that this is what this life's not all about. It's about living with you in heaven forever. Help us now. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. You read in this first verse of chapter 21, it's exciting news for a Christian. And you know, it's not exciting for no one that don't know Jesus, but it's exciting news for the church. It's exciting news. The thing that John saw. Boy, I, you know, John even reminds us there's some things that he wasn't allowed to write down. Right. We'll get to see them. You know, I, I don't know how much better it can be, but apparently it's going to be a lot better. 
Yeah, yeah. I, 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 I want to know what heaven smells like. I want to know what it feels like. You know, have you ever just been somewhere and the atmosphere was just so wonderful? Yeah, it's kind of like what my wife thinks about the mountain. She'll go up, she'll go, can you smell it? I'm going, no, I can't smell it. She can smell it. I mean, it's just, it's the same air we breathe down here, just maybe a different campfire somewhere else that she's smelling. I don't know. But when we get to heaven, it's just going to be so wonderful. And the, the excitement part of it, it it's not, it, it, it's not even entered in our heart. We cannot even imagine what it's going to be like. You remember the song that the guy wrote in the life story of I Can Only Imagine? Well, that's left up to our imagination. I'm not here to try to stretch that any further because my imagination is limited. God's word tells me it is because I can't even imagine what he's got in store for us. But John saw, we're going to talk about some of the things that John saw. Here's the first thing he saw. He says, I saw a new heaven. So brother Jamie, a new heaven. I thought God was going to, listen, he, there's a new heaven. Don't you like new things? You know, some people like too much new things. You know, they want a new husband or a new wife or, oh my goodness. And they find out that it's just like the other one. And, uh, but a new car. You know, I, 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 I thought about how to explain this to you. You know, uh, you can take what we used to was kind of ashamed of driving uh, because it was old. You know, I wasn't, I was proud. I had a 1965 Ford Stepside. Wish I still had it. Why? Because, well, but one thing is, they don't make them anymore. And, and I would do like some of you guys that can do. I would try to make it new. I, I, would, I would doll it up and I'd fix it up and, and I would make it look new. But you know what? It's not new. It's not new. And, and just imagine, you know, some people think that where we live right now is heaven on earth. Listen, it is not heaven on earth. And we're going to get something brand new. Uh, you know, a, a, a brand new car. You know, some, my wife, she's a sticker on this. So I ever give her a new vehicle, she looks at it. She says, well, it had 365 miles on it. Well, honey, I don't think they're going to let you go up there and put the first yard out of the factory on it. We want something brand new. A child born into the world. A brand new creation. Something brand new excites us. It's shiny. It don't have no uh, dings in it. It don't have uh, no weathering to it. The moth and the rust has not affected it yet. And it's just beautiful. Now it's all new. And the Bible says that God himself has built a place that John saw. Then he saw it as it was coming down out of heaven. A new heaven. Not only that, he saw a new earth. How's that going to be? Well, you, you got to realize one day we may we'll dwell here for a while. You know, in a new Jerusalem, a, a, a new, a, a new uh, residence, if you will. And it'll always be new. You know what? I wanted to give you something brand new today. Okay, but I can't. But the Lord did. You got a new day. You know, there's not another day like today. There's never been a day like today. There's never been a moment like this moment. Never. It's fresh. It's brand new. Amen. And the only thing is you can make it good or bad. It's up to you. It's a brand new day. The sun was not exactly like it was yesterday morning. The moon will not set exactly like it set yesterday afternoon. It's just one of those things we have no control over and it's brand new. And God has prepared a new thing for us. Not only that, that the new earth. He says, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. There's some places down here I'd like to do away with. Amen. I ain't going to call no names, but one of them's on the West Coast. I just love to do away with it. I mean, I'd love to change things. And I'll get my wish one day, but I won't be doing it. God will be doing it. And there's a new heaven and a new earth. We're going to enter. You know what the thing about it is? It's the amazing thing what God can do, and only God can. He's going to take a new place, and it's always going to be new every day. It's new every day. There's no housekeeping. He's built it where it's maintenance-free. It's new. It's every day. Say amen, girls. No housekeeping. What a wonderful place it is. And it says this. This was an amazing thing. 
and there shall be no more sea. Well, I know by reading in God's word that there is a river in heaven. There's waters on either side of, of the street. You know, there's a beautiful thing there and it's a river. But how can you have, I wish scientists would figure this one out for me. How can you have a river and there will be no sea? Where is it going to run? I don't know where it's going, but I know where it comes from. <laughs> the Bible says it runs from the throne of God. <laughs> wow. You want a cool drink of water. <laughs> you want a fresh drink, something. You know, I've learned something with all this bottled water. A safety lady explained this to me, and I've got to thinking about it now. I can't drink that other water. You know, I can drink my tap water. They want to come test it, but I don't want them to. I don't want to find out what's in it. I like it. They tell me there's something bad in it. I might not like it no more, and I can't afford to live off of bottled water. But purified water is better than, I mean, spring water is better than purified water. Do you know purified water is exactly what it says it is? It's been purified. So that means it has been contaminated. And we're drinking water that was contaminated through some kind of purifications that's made by and done by somebody we don't even know. Y'all don't like water no more, do you? <laughs> and there's a taste about it. You know, uh, you go to a fountain in, in, in town and, and, you know, you get thirsty. They say, boy, you know, my daddy's a stickler. He's here today. I could talk about him. You know, I'll talk about him if he ain't here. But, um, uh, my daddy was so cheap coming up. There's no way he's going to buy water. We went, to a ball, we went to a ball game one day. This is true. We went to a ball game, University of Georgia. It was 125 degrees where I was sitting. And finally, the heat and God broke daddy's heart. And he felt sorry for it. And he went and got us something to drink. And he saved a cup. He wanted a cup from the concession stand. It was going to charge him $3 for the cup. He says, I'll go to the bathroom and run me some of that water out of there for I'll come back and pay another whatever it was for that water. But what he didn't know was that was not that water that comes out of them under them live oak trees where he lives. It was purified water. Man, I'm going to tell you what, them town folks, they drink a lot of chlorine. You hear me? They drink a lot. I don't know how healthy that is for you. You know, you, you won't know till you die of it, right? And they're going to disguise it if you die of it. But let me tell you about the other type of water, the spring water. Spring water. It, it's, it, it's supposed to be coming out of a spring somewhere. You know, I'm sure if there's any tadpoles or minners in it, they get them out. But it should be spring water. And I think about that. If I can tell the difference down here in this mortal body, what is it going to be like when I drink from the water of life? <laughs> Man, when I drink for something that I'll never get thirsty again, and I'll drink something that don't have no contaminations in it, that man has caused it. When God created it, it was made perfect. And, and it's going to only be in that new place, the new heaven and the new earth where, where God is going to provide for you and I. Man, we ought to be excited about that. You know, I'm excited about going on the... Uh, the mountain trip. I'm excited about this. I'm excited about that. But there's nothing more exciting than know one day I'm going to spend for eternity with Jesus Christ. Man, I won't have to wake up and go to work. Woo-hoo! Some of y'all don't do that anyhow, but y'all used to maybe. Man, what a joyful time it'll be. But all this stuff will be passed away. And there won't be no sea there. Don't ask me, I can't answer. That's one of them things John didn't put in here. Where does the water go? I don't know. But I'll tell you what, it'll never run dry. God don't have to recycle. He just remakes. Verse 2 says, And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down. Would, could you imagine that? Woo-hoo, there it comes. He sees it. it's coming down on it. It's looking good for him. You know, and, and how is it going to look? As a bride adorned for her husband. You think about that. I've done, I done said my thing about Jan. You know, I've, uh, you know uh, first time I've ever seen her and probably the last time i ever seen her with red lipstick on. You know, she was dressed in white. She had a veil. And uh, even the veil couldn't hide the beauty that was behind there without black hair. And whew, Man, I'm getting chill bumps just thinking about that right now. 
And there she was. She was fixing to be mine. You know, and mine. And her daddy didn't understand that a few weeks afterwards. He tried to intrude on mine. I had to let him know. I, she was your daughter, but she's my wife now, buddy. I really did. Me and him had a talk. I threatened to meet him at Cornhouse Creek on the St. George Highway. Me and him was going to go toe to toe. She was mine. He couldn't have her back. I didn't want her to go back. And I've treated her like that all my life. But God said, boy, one day, one day he's going to give us that new life. And we're going to see the new Jerusalem coming down and there we'll ever be with the Lord. I'm going to tell you what exciting thing. And how is it going to look more exciting than the day you laid your eyes on the bride for the first time? Now you've seen her and you've loved on her and you've probably smooched on her a little bit. But I can tell you as a minister, when I stand here, the, the, the prettiest I've ever seen women is when they're at that back door fishing to come down that aisle. I married them two back there. And I remember she was standing up there and he was standing there by me. And, and when she came, I saw Seth tears run down from his face. Now that ain't like him. But there was something about that beauty, something about that relationship that, that he knew it, that in any moment they was fixing to be put together. And that beautiful woman was his. I wasn't jealous. I was going, mine used to look like that. Still does. <laughs> Y'all try to get me in trouble. Y'all always try to get me in trouble. Still does. I'm going to move on to verse 3. Not only that, he says, when he saw this stuff going, he says, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Man, I'm going to tell you, what a moment. What a moment, man. We live with the Spirit of God as Christians today. You know, that's what Jesus left for us. He left a comforter, but there, that won't be no more. The presence and the being of God will be a touch away from you at all times. He will be our God. He, the Bible says he will dwell among us. Where I walk, he walks. Amen. Whenever he says, I'll be listening. I won't have to close my eyes in prayer. I won't have to do none of that stuff. He will be in the midst. Oh, happy day. Yeah. You know, the good thing about it, there won't be no junk up there. There won't be no junk. They want nothing to be worried about. We won't be toting pistols. We won't be locking our doors. We won't be doing this and won't be doing that because the, the one that's going to take care of us is always with us. Amen. You know, it's, it's funny. I got to tell y'all one. Y'all know Emerson's a little shy. Unless you don't, you know, if you don't know her, she ain't shy otherwise. But I heard this morning, clippity-clop, clippity-clop coming down the the hallway of the church and I knew she was sporting some new boots I'm, new heels I'm sorry she straightened everybody out didn't want boots and was heels and I'm going who's with her there ain't no way she's coming from down here and coming up there but I kept listening I said no it can't be her I don't hear nobody else but then she ran into Miss Arlene there in the office she was turning the attendance in I guess and they began to talk I said that's Emerson and the thing she says, I'm not scared of strangers anymore. I'm not scared of that at all. Anyway, she got to talking to it, and I just peeped out of there, and she was clippity clop, clippity clop, clippity clop. You know what? When we get to heaven, there will be the same atmosphere for us. We will fear nothing. We will be welcomed in any door that we open. And the king of all kings will be present. His father will be on his throne. He'll be sitting on the right hand there. And he'll be there for us to partake of at all times. And we'll never get tired. That's wonderful. It was a wonderful voice that they heard from heaven. But the thing is, God himself will do this. Now verse, 20, now verse 4. And God shall wipe away all our tears from their eyes. What a moment. What a moment. You say, well, you know, I, I've seen more tears of sorrow than I have of joy. I, I, you know, and it's a shame. But God's going to wipe all that away. Well, how is that possible? Well, he describes how that's possible in just a few minutes. He takes away a lot of stuff that causes those things. And in heaven, those things are not welcome there. 
How in the world can someone go there who don't believe that God can relieve them of that stuff? You got to believe in God. There'll be no more. He wipes away God himself. You ever see somebody in an emotional moment, you know, a funerals or, or, or you know, I, I've seen moms giving their daughters away and they'd be boo-hooing. And, you know, and, and I'd see the dad of the son over there. He's cheering. And I, I, one's laughing, one's crying, what, you know, and you give them a napkin and all like that to, to wipe their, you know, to snot off their nose and, and their eyes. And can you imagine when, when that moment comes when Jesus, we stand before him and we're in New Jerusalem and he just says, no more tears, no more tears. You will never remember anything from this point on that will ever make you doubt, will ever make you sorrowful, will ever make you fall short of being nothing but full of glory and joy and peace and happiness because he will wipe those things away. Oh, happy day. Happy day. And not only that, he says, he wiped their tears from eyes. He says, and there will be no more death. Could you imagine that? You know why there'll be no more death? Because Jesus, when he died, he died, he was victorious over three things. Death, hell, and the grave. The grave couldn't hold him. <laughs> Praise God. And, you know, and, and, and there he went and defeated death. He took the keys of death and hell from Satan himself. He will not have control over that. You won't have to worry about dying. I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people today set their day out so that they don't have a chance to die. You said, Really? I promise you, you do. I promise you do. Everything you do in your life, you're going to, you know, you're watching for the light to turn red. You're stopping at the railroad track. Make sure a train ain't coming. You're doing a lot of stuff. You prayer. Up there, you ain't going to have to worry about that. Death will not be in heaven. Amen. It's taken away. And you won't never get old. I was teasing somebody this morning. Happens to be our piano player. And, and, and she says, one day I'll get smart enough and I'll learn to play this in a key that you can sing in, Brother Jamie. I said, that'll be when your hair gets gray. She said, I started to let it stay gray and I saw that and it never going to happen. So she'll never get smart enough to change keys. What she's telling me, because that hair will never be gray. When you get to heaven, if there is hair there, we're going to have a head full of it and it'll be its natural color. Amen. Amen. I feel sorry for those that don't have some. It's really a pain. It is. I seen a guy the other day. He's got a real wide part right down the middle. And they was standing out there in the sun. It was one of those last few days of 96, 7 degree weather. And he had one of them netted hats on. And, and, and he reached in his pocket and he pulled out a handkerchief. We're standing in that hot boiling sun. And he put that napkin on his head and he put his hat on going, What are you doing? He says, man, that sun burns my bald head up. I said, when you get to heaven, you ain't going to have to worry about that. Amen. Amen. That's going to be a wonderful thing. There's so many of these little things that we, we won't have to worry about when we get to heaven. There'll be no more death, neither sorrow, no crying, neither shall there be any more pain. Praise God for that. How many of you is hurt? I was over there leaning, sitting on my knee, talking to my mom. My mom had a bad knee forever and ever and ever. And I was sitting up there like that right there, and I started to get up and shake something. I said, I blame you for that same old bad knee you got. There won't be none of that in heaven. Hey, some of us sit and deal with pain every day. Some of us have not, not only the ouchy pain, but the pain of sorrow. I'll tell you one, the one that hurts the worst is the pain of sorrow. It hurts more than regular pain. The ones that affect nerves. The ones that don't affect nerves, it affects the emotions let me tell you, that's a terrible pain. Broken heartedness is an awful thing. When you feel like you let down, when you think that the whole world's turned against you, when there is nothing else you feel like you can do in this life, and you have thrown your hands up and the devil has won, that's an awful pain. Won't be none there. Won't be none there. There will be no pain. And the reason why? It says, for the former things are passed away. You know why? Because all things are new. And he ain't going to create none of them. They won't never be there. They're all brand new. It just gets better. 
Notice what it says. And he that sat on the throne, he said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Right, for these things are true and faithful. Let me tell you, there's where it is. There's where the whole thing is. If you believe it's true and you believe that God is going to be faithful to his promises, you got hope in this life. You got hope for eternal life. And I'm not telling you a hope by not having whatever. The hope is you believe in Jesus Christ. Every one of us have an opportunity to accept Christ. And if that's you, these are your promises. And you're basing it on his truthfulness and his faithfulness. He has never let me down. He has never let me down. I've never felt sorry about accepting him as my savior. I never feel sorry about when I preach his word. I've never felt sorry about leading someone to Jesus. I've never uh, felt sorry not one time about looking at the old cross and thinking about it. I had a thought the other day. You know, it's deer season. I thought about the, the young man that made this cross for us right here. And, and, and you know, I thought about taking the old cross to the taxidermy. You know, I, I, I thought about it. I said, you know what? I, I'll take that cross that boy made me and, and, and we put up. I didn't ask nobody. It ain't nothing wrong with a cross. If we had 3,000 crosses in here, it'd be all right with me. Because this is where the rubber met the road right here, folks. You know what I want him to do? I've seen them do fish and stuff and bears and different things like that. I wonder if they could uh, uh, take that, old, uh, that stuff that looks like water and, and color it red. And let's put blood all over it and see where the nails was and, and where he bled from his precious head and where he bled from his precious feet like that. Sometimes we look at the old blank cross and we forget about the pain and the suffering that our Savior did so that we wouldn't have it when we got to heaven. Whew. Man, just a reminder what's on there. You know, don't you think that's a good idea? If we could find a taxidermist who would take it. So, you know, most, of the, most of the time you bring dead things in there. Hey, this won't be a dead thing. This thing right here is alive. It represents me every day of my life. The Bible says to take up my cross daily and follow him. To remember what he did for me on the cross of Calvary. To share the cross. If you have problems, that's where you go to the cross. When you're having a good time, it's where you go. You share the cross to somebody. If you want freedom and you want liberty and you want to be set free, it's found under beneath a place called Calvary where this cross was put. Not this cross. Not that cross. But the cross where they nailed my Savior. You know, amazing to me that God would even allow a tree to grow that soon one day would be big enough to hang his son on. He could have made a difference. Y'all remember him cursing the fig tree when it didn't have no fruit? Not only that, they cut it up and they burn it. They cast it away. But he knew that tree, that special tree, whichever tree it was, wherever they found it, that grew to hang his son on. I believe he watered it and I believe he fed it and I believe he took care of it. I believe he set it aside. That one day would bear the sins of the world with my son on it. And he allowed it to live. If it would have been mine, I'd have cut it down. I'd have caused lightning to come through there. I'd have caused bugs to get in it. I'd have done something in this life. It would have caused it not to be because I wouldn't give up my son for no one in this place. But I can tell you what, there's an almighty God who's prepared a heaven for us, a brand new place for us, who gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Whew, in a new place. Man, I like new stuff. I would like to pay for it. I don't have to pay for this when God, His Son, paid for this. Man, I like it even better. You know, first, first kind of well-to-do place I go, and they had all this stuff going around. People, I was toting this stuff around there. Man, I was going there. I said, when are we going to eat? Man, I was looking. A girl come by, and, 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 and all of a sudden, uh, there was a girl come by, and she had some shrimp on a stick about that long. And they, they said it was hors d'oeuvres. I thought it was shrimp on a stick. That's what it looked like to me. You know, and, and she come by me and I tried new one of them. I said, man, that thing's good right there. I, and, and when she come by, I said, man, you got any more of them shrimp on a stick? She says, she says no, I, I, you know, I'm going to the back. I'll, I'll get some more. So I watched her. She didn't have but one or two when she got to me, but I watched her where she went in that kitchen in the back back there. It was a big old ballroom. I was looking at her. You know what I done? I said, I'm smarter than this him. Before she run out to get to me, I'm going to run back over here to that back door. <laughs> and when she comes out of there, I'm going to attack her and them shrimp on a stick. If you want something 
that you enjoy. Get closer to it. If you want something before it's gone, move closer to it. Man, I did. I mean, I, that, they had fed me a few things that was on some sticks. I don't even know what it was, but I don't care to know. I don't want to never eat it again. The best thing I found was that shrimp on a stick. So I moved closer to where I could get it. Let me tell you, God's going to give you everything you ever wanted and desired. Verse 6 says a power right here, and I'm going to give it to you. He's faithful and true, folks. Verse 6, he says, And he said unto me, It is done. I know that was pretty easy to read, and that was just like it's... Let me tell you, it's more to it than that. When Jesus was on this cross, before he yielded up the ghost, you know what he said? He says, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. It is finished. When I finish my plate, I'm not done. I'll go back and I'll get some more. He finished the work that his father had, but it was not done. But when the new heaven and the new, the new Jerusalem comes down and we inhabit that place, and when it's all said and done, he told John, he says, when you get to this point right here, buddy, it's done. It's done. I mean, it's always, picking the back in the summertime, I've always enjoyed it. I, you know, that's what made me learn to love to, to work and, and to make stuff happen. You know, I, I like that. I like to be able to look behind me, like mowing grass. I like to mow grass because when I go by there, I look by there, ain't no grass there, and I got some more I got to chop down. I mean, I just like that. We've been picking the back. But oh, happy day. Everybody wanted to pick the last leaf on the last stalk at the last row. Oh, happy day. You know what we said then? It's done. It's done. When we get to heaven, that's the, that's the motto. Welcome in, my children. Well done. Well done. He says, because it's done. It's done. It's finished. It's even more than finished. It's done. He says, I am Alpha and Omega. I thought about that. You know, the word alpha is, is the word that also we look at as far as the beginning. Omega is the one we look at for the ending. And not only that, in the Greek uh, alphabet, it's the first letter and omega is the last letter. I'm ready for omega. I'm ready for omega. And Jesus says, I am the beginning and I will end it. <laughs> it will be done. It will be done. Nobody else, no other religion does this for anybody. Not even a prayer. Joseph Smith couldn't do it. Reverend Moon couldn't do it. Buddha the fat guy on a stick, he couldn't do it. But Jesus says, I have done it. I've completed it. I am done. He ain't done till that trumpet sounds and we go home. He ain't done till we all gather around the throne. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. Are you thirsty? Are you thirsty? You know, sometimes I'm not hungry. Very few times, but there's sometimes I'm not hungry. But I tell you what will make me hungry. You go by some of these farmhouses about 11.30 or about 6 in the afternoon. You know, I've, I've been there at people's houses cruising wood and different things and you open up that door and you get out and somebody's frying bacon. I just had a bacon, egg, and cheese biscuit about an hour ago and I'm good. All of a sudden, I'm hungry. You go by somebody's house and that smell of fried chicken. Oh, <laughs> Woo, my goodness, my granny's fried chicken. And you smell that. Well, let me tell you, you know what I'm smelling? I'm smelling the soon coming of Jesus Christ, my King. I'm smelling it and I'm more excited about it. I'm ready to partake of that which He's promised me because He's faithful and true. He's coming back. The more I listen to other preachers and uh, different... Uh, 
Bible studies and the more I, I, I do all these things, everybody's talking about Jesus coming back. Why? Why? Because it's true. <laughs> If you got a religion that ain't mentioned in that, you living under a false religion, a false doctrine. Jesus was made down here for us to come back again. That was his job. And if you go there, he'll give you an everlasting water you drink freely of. Not only that, verse 7. He says, he that overcometh shall inherit all things. That means all the heaven, all the things John talked about. He says, I will be his God and he will be my son. Now I'm going to finish up. There's a description of people, and I'm going to say people, that won't be there. It's in the next verse. And I hope none of these fit you. But if they do, you have a way out. I want to I talk about it just a moment, if you will. Verse 8 says this. But the fearful, you know, I thought about that. It ain't a scaredy cat. It ain't one like that. I, I, I believe it's one that fears to believe in Jesus Christ. I, I think they want to keep the world and not give it up and, and, and turn their lives over. I believe that's what they're scared of. That's the fear. There's a lot of people in prisons right now. They didn't fear those things. But let me tell you something, brother. They will fear him. There's a fear inside of those unfearless people that you think that don't fear anything. But I'm telling you, they will fear him. So well, how do you know that? Because the Bible says that every knee shall bow. Why are they going to bow? Because they fear the supreme being of God Almighty. I'm telling you to believe it by faith. When you see him face to face, you're going to believe it because his power is going to be demonstrated. And that mortal body cannot stand there. It'll just fall to the ground. And you'd be wishing you had. But they're fearful. And the unbelieving, the fearful was the ones that were scared to turn loose of all this stuff. And the unbelieving is one that says, there ain't no God. There ain't no God. Now, I know I'm going to mess this up, but I've got to share it with you. Caleb told it. There was this atheist. You know, he's an unbeliever. Which he's... A, a, a person like that, they only lie to themselves so that it can lie to everybody else. Even the creator created people and things and animals. They know there's a creator. That even the wind and the seas obey his voice. They know they are. But this atheist guy, and I, I just lost what he was doing. Oh, he was out walking through the woods. And he was looking at the creation right there and he was looking at all that stuff and, you know, in this beautiful place, maybe in California, looking at the sequoia tree. I don't know where he but it was a beautiful place. And he still was denouncing that there was a God. And all of a sudden, he come up on this grizzly bear. And I mean, he was foaming at the mouth, growling. I don't know how they do, but they say they're bad. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the atheist began to pray. He said, Lord, please turn this bear into a Christian. Please turn this bear into a Christian. Why is that? Because a Christian wouldn't hate, steal, kill, destroy. You know, I, I get it. Lord, you know, he's calling on somebody who don't believe. And the Lord told him, so be it. And when he opened up his eyes, the old bear was over there on his knees. And the bear had an audible prayer. He says, thank you, Lord, for this meal you have prepared before me this day. The unbelieving won't be there. That guy wouldn't be there. But you might see the bear if he believed. Murderers. I don't think that you could take the word murderers that someone just walked up there and said pow and killed somebody. As to that's all it means. You know, you could murder somebody by hatred. 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 
Hate will separate you from the love of God. And if you've got a following, it's just as though you killed them. If you've led them astray and not led them to Jesus. I told this lost man one time, I was, I was getting close to him. and He's somewhat, I don't know, he don't claim to be an atheist, but he don't believe in God. He, you know, and I told him, and we had to spend some time together, a whole week off somewhere. And I got out of his truck that afternoon, and we had talked a little bit about church. We talked a little about Jesus. I'd quoted a few scriptures to him, just trying to ease my way into it, because I didn't want him to slam the door in my face. I mean, I needed to ride home, too. I got out of that truck that day. I says, I says sir, well, I called him by name, but I'm not going to call his name. I said, I want you to consider something. I said, there's something much worse than someone who don't decide to choose Jesus. He said, what's that? I said, that's certain someone leading his family to a devil's hell. That's murder. Hate and murder. And then the next one, whoremongers. Well, we all think we got that figured out, and part of that's probably true. But let me tell you, if you're a child of God and you're diddling around with some other idol, that's considered being a whoremonger. Falling in love with something else when you're supposed to be in love with Jesus is a whoremonger. Before you're even born again in this life, having other things, whether it be a woman, whether it be a dog, whether it be a deer, whether it be a, 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 anything in this life, money, you fall in that category. A whoremonger. And sorcerers. <laughs> I thought about this. This was pretty easy, I thought. You know, there's, there's, there's people that still go to the Ouija boards. And, and they still go to these fortune tellers. And they still believe in ghosts. And they still believe in mysterical powers. Let me tell you, the Bible tells us that they are such things. And people that believe in them, they'll have no part in heaven. Because those things are under the jurisdiction of the devil, and God's under over the jurisdiction of the devil himself. And he won't be there. Be careful what you play with. Say, so I don't do that, Brother Jamie. Be careful. I finally got my wife broke because her daddy believed it. Black cat run across the road. What you think she done? She put an X on that window. And that thing's killed more dogs than you can believe. And it might be working for her. I don't know. She ain't killed a cat yet. But it's supposed to be bad luck. Let me tell you something. There ain't no such thing as luck. There's things happening in your life, good and bad, that God allows it to happen in you so that you will grow stronger in Him and depend on Him more if you just open up your eyes and see it. Say, so why am I in the state that I am? God's got a purpose. Look for that and still look for the bad. Look for what God's got you doing and what He wants you to do and use what He's put you in as a way to get people to know Jesus. I'm hurrying. And, all, and idolaters and liars. People, I mentioned Buddha a while ago. That's nothing but a homemade idol. And there's many, many more. Been over in the, in the Bible, they were all up and down there. But money, the love of money is the root of all evil. If money's your idol, then so be it. If your house, your car, or whatever your possessions is could be an idol. It stands between you and God. Whatever it is, is an idol. And that other part, liars. And I, I, I don't think... Where'd my pie go? Okay. Whew. Somebody done something while I wasn't looking. Liars. What is a liar? Well, I, it don't necessarily mean, Cindy, did you speed today? No, sir, I didn't. Well, I clocked you at 68 miles an hour. I'm not talking about that kind of lie. There's people that's living a lie today. And they're liars. They say they're Christians, but they ain't. 
They say they've been born again, but they ain't. I don't know that. All I got to do is judge by the fruit that I see. And that don't mean nothing. But I can tell you, the devil will fill you full of lies and say, you remember when you were three years old and you went down there with the group and you done all that? Well, you're good. Don't worry about it. And they live like hell all their life. And they say, no, 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 no. That's a lie. I don't know how many times people come to the preacher. Well, I remember. Uh, great. Are you sure? Are you sure? I can't make it. But are you sure? Do you still do, you still do things? You know, I had not, had not this happened very long ago. And that person is no longer with us because I, 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 I hemmed him up. I shouldn't say to him. I hemmed that person up. I said, do you still desire to do these things that you're, you've confessed to me that you're doing? He says, yes, I do. And I, I'm sorry. I, I said, are you sure you're saved? If you keep doing those same things that you know God's not pleased with, I'm not sure you're in love with God. I'm not sure. Are you living a lie? You know, that's a good way to get your face popped right there. Just walk up there and say, you liar. Don't try it. That's God's business. But when they stand before him, he can call it exactly like it is. That ain't all. They'll know what they are. How many of you like to do business with people that lie? No. But do we lie? Do we live like something else and say we're something when we're nothing? Where, Brother Jamie, where's all these things going to be at? Well, they're not going to be in heaven. I'm glad you asked because I want to tell you. He says, They shall all have their part which in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Are you not happy that in heaven none of them things is going to be there? The sad part about it is... I. I'm, I'm afraid there's some of them that's so guilty of this and don't know Jesus that won't be there. That's the sad part. But the great part about it, if we do business dealings in heaven, I'll go up there, Brother Scott says, hey, I want that cow you got. Okay, you can have her. Boom, I'm, that's all. It's, it's good. It's, she's mine. I believe in him. I mean, he ain't lying to me. If I asked him, she's in good health. Yes, as far as I know, she's in good health. Boom, she's mine. I won't dread her to be it. I'll go on about my pastor up in glory. But the place for all these things, if that's what's running your life, are you living a lie? Are, are you a harmonger? Are you an idolater? Are, are you a part of the unbelieving? Are you the one that don't never can really nail it down? If you're doing things in your life and it's not, you're not being convicted of Jesus Christ, when you do these things, you are not born again. Do you get it? You're not born again. If you continue in sin... Tonight, we'll touch some more of that. But my thing is, are you ready for something new? Are you ready that when everything is new and none of this comes in? You know what? When we get that from God, it don't come with a warranty. Because it can't tear up. It don't wear out. Ain't it wonderful? Amen. Do you know Jesus today? Is He your Savior? Are you been playing do you know for sure if he were to come today, would you fall in one of them categories that it says they won't have no part in heaven, but where their part will be is in a lake of fire which burns with briar and brimstone. Other scripture says where the worm dieth not. That means the soul of the man. That being or being will never die. It's also eternal. Give yourself a check. Used to channel 12. Donna... Whichever one she is. When the women's breast cancer thing awareness come out, they created this thing called a buddy check. And, and they would remind each other about checking for lumps and stuff like that. Well, if you love somebody today, you need to give them a buddy check. See if there's any lump in their relationship with Jesus. 
See if they need to come to the doctor. Maybe you need to do a self-examination. Feel down in that spiritual heart and see if there's any damage. In... See, God won't give you a splint. He won't even give you a bypass. He'll give you a brand new one. And you won't have any medications after it. You'll be made new. When I got saved, I became new. When we baptized, we baptized the old man and the resurrection of a new man. That person will go to heaven. How about you? Father God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. God, I thank you, Lord, for being Lord. I thank you, God, for having the word. It should be exciting. The only sad is, God, there's some that's been playing games. And you could come back any moment with all the trouble in the Middle East and the way things are going in America. God, I'm, I'm no genius, but I, I read your word. The signs of the time are here. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be 20 years from now. I don't know. But I know it's closer than it's ever been. God, I can't wait to see you. As John ended in the last book, as you told him how the end would be near, that you would some soon come quickly. He said, even so come, Lord Jesus. Even so come. That's our heart to die today, but God, we hope that none will miss that time to get things right. Today is their day. Extend it to them, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. Let's stand. that everyone in here is okay with the Lord. Which I hope is true. I'm going to make a promise to you. Me and Sister Boog and Brother Ronnie, we're going to work up a new song and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a little bit of it right now because it fits the moment. Okay? There is come mean a day where no heartache shall come no more clouds in the sky no more tears to dim the eye all is peace forevermore on that happy golden shore what a day glorious day that will be, if you agree with me, sing that chorus with me. What a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. When I look upon his face. Oh, he's beautiful. Oh, then save me by his grace. When he takes me by the hand. And leads me through the promised land. What a day, glorious day that will be. <laughs> I'm excited. It's going to happen. We're going to go. I promise. Mark.
dismisses.